everyone. It's time for another youth message. Uh, I have something I want to share with you that's been very personal in my life for the last week. <coughs> and so um, let's get into it. So I made the decision last week after all of the goings on in Washington, D.C. to take a break from Facebook. And when I say take a break, I mean, I can't not do Facebook because of what I do here, like uploading this video, but I'm only going to be on the church's Facebook page. I'm not going to go to my page at all. And the reason for this is <coughs> it all started, goodness, when did it start? Uh before the election, it started actually before the Black Lives Matter protests, but it really upscaled at the time of the riots. And it escalated even more at the election and even more post-election and then even more like super too much after what happened last week in Washington, DC. Now I'm not condoning what happened in DC at all, no way. <clears throat> but the amount of hate that has been building in Facebook has been horrible. And I have some people that I thought were friends uh, who everything that spews from them in Facebook is hate absolute hate. Everything is hate, hate, hate. Or if my, if you don't believe my way, then you're wrong. You, you're just wrong. You're uneducated. You're stupid. You don't know anything. And, um, I had a, a friend who was making some comments and I was just like, you're not helping things with what you're saying. You're not you're not bringing in peace. You are stirring up hate by what you say. So I commented back to her and I said, stop it. Stop it. You say others are inciting hate, but what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop it. Stop it. Ask people to stop. Tell people to stop. You need to start with peace in you instead of stirring up more hate. And oh my goodness, the backlash that came from my comment to her, oh, I was like, Whoa. now I don't care what people say about me. But I realized that I was going to Facebook for the wrong reasons, not to see the good, not to see what people had going on in their life, but to see what people were saying about certain things and how much hate was there and who was spewing the hate and what were they saying. And I realized it was hurting me. It was hurting my heart. It was hurting my spirit. It was hurting my relationship with other people and it was hurting my relationship with God. So I made the decision to walk away. So I have been away from Facebook not quite a week I don't think and I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I every once in a while I have like a little oh I wonder nope so I made the decision that whenever I feel the need to scroll Facebook, instead, I am going to scroll through my Bible and get the encouragement and the love and the things that I need, the peace that I need in my life, will not come from Facebook. Will not come from Facebook. And no matter what people are saying, the next president will not be God, I can tell you that. And uh, the next vice president will not be a God. And I keep feeling like some people think that Biden is going to, I've even heard it, heard it, uh, said that Biden will set everything right, that everything right will, everything in the world will be right. I'm like, wow, that hasn't happened ever. And it, it, it's got me really worried that people are going to put too much pressure on Biden and he's not going to be able to do what he needs to do because everybody has these 
false ideas of what he can do and what he can accomplish. I don't care if the House and the Senate are Democrat too. I don't care. It doesn't matter. He's not God. He's a sinful man, a very sinful man, just like every other president that's ever been there. The vice president is a very sinful woman, just like every other vice president and every woman that's ever walked the face of the earth. Every congressman, every senator, everyone in Washington, D.C. is very sinful. I'm telling you that right now. Just like me. I'm a very sinful person. I'm not perfect. I never have been and I never will be. And to think that another person is going to be perfect or going to make the world perfect means that you are putting them in the place of a God. And that's when I decided I have to back up. I have to walk away because if I don't, I'm going to fall into that trap. I'm going to fall into the trap of hate and I don't want that. So I decided to take a break. And that day, when I decided to do this, I literally went into my Bible, and my devotional reading for that day is the reading I'm going to read for you now. It is 1 Peter 5, 1 through 10. And so here's what it says. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's suffering. So this is written by Peter and one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock. That is under your care. Serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you want to. As God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being an example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all of your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. That's literally the devotion that I read that day, that I decided Facebook on. I can't even explain to you what it did to me. It was so powerful. Now, it wasn't a scripture that I'd never read before. It was highlighted, and there are notes in the margins about this scripture. So it's not one I was like, oh, I never read that before. Wow, where'd that come from? But it's one I forgot about. And so every day, since the day I decided to Facebook, I have read this passage of scripture every morning before I do anything else, before I do any other devotions, I read 1 Peter 5, 1 through 10, every day. And my plan is to read it every day, at least through January, and maybe every day for the rest of my life, I don't know. But it reminded me who I am and whose I am and what God has called me to and it reiterated, reiterated to me the fact that if I do this I do it for God I do it for my relationship with God not for glory not for honor not for pride I do it so I can be submissive and humble so I can focus on my servanthood my willing servanthood for Christ. Not because I have to, but because 
I want to. I am where I want to be because I know God put me here. God put me here and I didn't resist it. I'm not fighting it. I'm here because God wants me here. I have added things to the margins about this scripture. I have written in my new devotional, remember I told you about my new devotional book or my journal. Um, I have written in this, oh my goodness, this thing is filling up fast. I was like, my mother-in-law gave me this and I don't even know how many pages I'm on, but um, yeah, I'm filling it up pretty fast. So that right there, that's, that's what I've already written in. I've got a ways to go yet, but whew. so I also want, um, it wasn't just scripture that came to me. It was um, my devotional books. Now I have about five devotional books that I read and uh, meditate on. And I'm always surprised at how God speaks to me, not just through the scripture, but through the words of the devotions. And so I wanted to share those with you. And I'm sorry that this is a little bit long, but I felt it was important and it was powerful. So this was the same day, all of this was the same day as when I decided to stop Facebook. So this is from my devotional, Jesus Calling, and I wrote it in my, in my journal. I am with you and for you. When you decide on a course of action that is in line with my will, nothing in heaven or on earth can stop you. You may encounter many obstacles as you move towards your goal, but don't be discouraged. Don't give up. With my help, you can overcome any obstacle. Do you expect an easy path as you journey hand in hand with me? But remember that I, your very present helper, am omnipresent, meaning everywhere. If you want to stay close to me and do things my way, ask me to, slow, to show you the path to show you the path forward moment by moment instead of dashing headlong toward your goal. Let me set the pace, slow down, and enjoy the journey in my presence. This was the same day, okay? And it's not done yet. So this was in my Max Licato, God is with you. Turn a deaf ear to doubters. Ignore the naysayers. People have a right to say what they want. And you have a right to ignore them. <laughs> when the 12 spies reported back to Moses, so Moses sent out 12 spies to go scout the area that they were going to travel through, the Israelites were going to travel through. So he sent out 12 spies and they all came back to report. All but Caleb and Joshua were spouting doubt. So of the 12, these two, Caleb and Joshua, were not saying, hey, we can't do this. They were out number 10 to 2, but they still believed in God's power. Let's take our cue from Caleb. Disregard the lethal disbelief of cynics. There is no sanction for rudeness or isolation. When people express their sincere struggles or questions, then help them. But some folks just don't want to be helped. They would rather pull you down than let you pull them up. Don't let them. Caleb didn't. He filled his mind with faith and took on God-sized challenge. When Moses sent Caleb to spy out the land, Caleb saw something that troubled him, and that was the town of Hebron. Abraham had buried his wife there. He was buried there, and so were Isaac, Rebekah, and Jacob. Heb Hebron was a sacred site, but it was inhabited by unholy people. So Caleb asked Moses for Hebron. Moses took the request to God, and Caleb was given the land. Forty-five years later, at the age of 85, this old soldier chased the enemy and reclaimed the city of Hebron. Caleb wanted to do something great for God. He lived with the higher call. You do too. Ask for Hebron. I don't know if you understood what that meant. 
but I decided my Hebron is Columbus, Nebraska, the United States of America, in this world. I am praying, praying every day for our community, for our state, for our nation, and for our world. I'm calling for Hebron. I'm calling for the evil and the hate to stop. And I challenge you and I encourage you to do the same. And if that means walking away from Facebook, do it. If it means deciding you can't be around a certain person because of the way they act and the way they talk, the way they put you down, then do it. You have to be you. You have to be who God called you to be. And when you decide to put your life in line with God and his will, he will set the pace. He will show you the way. He has you. He's been there before you even took a step into it. In five minutes, Jesus has already been there. At four o'clock this afternoon, Jesus has already been there. At nine o'clock tomorrow night, Jesus has already been there. He knows what's coming and he's ready to walk with you all the way. But you have to be willing to walk with him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, making decisions about things like this are hard. We think about what am I going to miss out on or what's going to happen because I do these things. We get so twisted up in them, but show us what can happen if we focus on you, if we let our hearts and our minds be yours. Give us the peace and the knowledge that you have for us. Amen. I hope you guys really enjoy your Zoom time tonight. Um, I don't know if Brian and Judy are going to show the video that I have um, for the 5th through 8th graders, but it's kind of a cute one. The 5th and 8th through 8th graders didn't like the, sorry, I got something in my eye, didn't like the video I had last week, the counting sheet. They thought it was dorky. I thought it was cute. But I have a different video for this week, so we'll see. You guys have a great night. I love you. I can't wait to see you all. Bye.